Well, in today's video, we're talking about 13 things that you must know when living in Chesapeake, Virginia. And we're starting right now. Hey, my name is Sam Santalone, and I'm a real estate agent in Hampton Roads, Virginia. And I do videos all the time about Hampton Roads and about Hampton Roads and real estate. And I help people from all over the world move into this area. And if you have any questions about moving here, please let me know. I'll put my contact information in the description and I'll do whatever I can to help you. Now, today we're talking about 11 things that you must know about living in Chesapeake, Virginia. And it's also some things that locals might not even know, especially a couple near the end. So number one is that Chesapeake is essentially multiple cities under the same name. They all have different feels. There's South Chesapeake, there's South Norfolk, which is actually another part of Chesapeake, and then there's Western Branch. They all kind of feel differently. Uh, South Chesapeake is the country area. Most of it where, where someone that thinks about Chesapeake might think of all that country land. That's where South Chesapeake is. But South Norfolk is more of an urban area. A lot of more houses closer together, closer to uh, downtown Norfolk, for instance, totally different than South Chesapeake. And then Western Chesapeake is closer to parts of South Chesapeake, it has some similar elements to it, but it's further away from the rest of the city. The reason I say this is because when you look up Chesapeake and you try and ask people about Chesapeake, the answers you get might be dependent on what uh, parts of Chesapeake the people you ask are telling you about. So the crime statistics are different in all areas, the schools are different, everything is different. So make sure you, just, you specify and know where you're moving to if you do plan to live in Chesapeake. Now number two is people do come for the schools. Um, there are some areas where the schools are not ranked as high, but South Chesapeake and parts of Western Chesapeake have some really high ranked schools, uh, school districts. Grassfield, Hickory, uh, Great Bridge, Western Branch, these are the four I'd say they're the most in demand. Grassfield and Hickory are really high up there in the state rankings. Um, then there are some others that are kind of in the middle of the road, but if you plan on moving to Chesapeake, know a lot of people do come here for the schools and certain school districts, and those, because they're in high demand, increase the real estate prices as well. Now, number three is the Battle of Great Bridge. Now, I mentioned earlier Great, Great Bridge School District. Well, Great Bridge is a section of South Chesapeake. Well, the Battle of Great Bridge was a battle that was one of the more significant, yet very quick, battles before the Declaration of Independence in 1776. On December 9th, 1775, the Battle of Great Bridge happened, where the Continental Army warded off the British, which was the catalyst to saving the state of Virginia for the United States. One of the more significant events that happened before the Declaration of Independence. Now, every year, December 9th, actually, actually two days, they do reenactments at the same location where the battle was held. And interestingly enough, this battle was only like 20 to 30 minutes. It happened super fast, but it was incredibly significant. So something to keep in mind, and a lot of locals don't know too much about this battle. And the next one is you still need a car. A lot of people like to come to Chesapeake to hike, places like uh, the Great Dismal Swamp that we'll mention later. There are so many parks, lots of wildlife, uh, but a lot of these areas are so far apart that you may have to drive from one, one place to another to get there. And a lot of the areas that have the country residential feel, they're far apart enough away from the rest of the city and the rest of the like Virginia Beach and Norfolk to where if you don't have a car, you're not going to enjoy it. It's, it's going to be really, really difficult. I strongly recommend you get a car before you plan on living in Chesapeake. Now, number five is the Great Dismal Swamp. This is If you look on the map, you'll see on the south and southwestern sides of Chesapeake, there's a big grassy box. That's the Great Dismal Swamp. It has lots of historical roots back in the 1600s. It's a large protected area. Bears are in there, snakes. I mean, it's, it's straight up wildlife. So if you do plan on going to hike in there, be prepared. But right in the middle of the Great Dismal Swamp is my next one, number six, which is Lake Drummond. This is a over 3,000 acre lake right in the middle of the Great Dismal Swamp. And it connects to another section that's really interesting that I'll mention later on in the video. And it's one of only two freshwater natural lakes in the state of Virginia. The reason it's named Lake Drummond is because in 1665, uh, the future governor of North Carolina, William Drummond, discovered this lake. I mean, I'd say that <laughs> it's such a big lake, I can't say that it really takes that much credit to say you discovered it. But nevertheless, he found it, he gets the name, Lake Drummond. A couple things about this lake too. It's six feet max in depth, so it's it's a big lake, but it's relatively shallow. So if you do plan on boating in this area, 
Uh, if you use a boat that has a motor, that motor often, just you gotta be aware of, there's some, some tree roots and some stumps that are on the lake floor that can stick up enough to where if your boat goes across it, it can bump into those things. So just be careful if you do have a boat that uses a motor. Now number seven, this is something that you may keep in mind if you plan on buying a house in this area, is that there are lots of septic tanks and well water systems in this area, especially the further south you go. Now, a long time ago, this area was a lot of country. So with a lot of country, there are lots of individual systems for wastewater and waste. So septic tanks were very common as well as well systems. Uh, so they weren't necessarily connected to the city, uh, city water and sewer. As property was developed in Chesapeake, more and more areas had access to city water and sewer. Well, that didn't help the southern sections uh, very much because they're still further away from that main area. But over time, a lot of the neighborhoods that had a septic and well eventually were able to convert to city water and sewer. You find a lot of houses that are a little bit cheaper. Sometimes that's because they are on septic and uh, well systems. And so you, then you can factor in, okay, is it worth it for me to get this house uh, and pay to have it connected to city water and sewer or keep it the way it is? So the further south and away from the, the main city that you get, the more likely you'll have septic and uh, well systems. Now next is Chesapeake has some jet noise, believe it or not. Now we've talked about uh, jet noise in other videos I've talked about in the Oceania Naval, Naval Air Station is in Virginia Beach. That allows for lots of jet noise in that area of Virginia Beach. However, Chesapeake has a section as well called called Fentress that has an airfield as well. It's called Fentress Airfield. Now, it doesn't mean that this whole the whole city of Chesapeake is gonna have a lot of jet noise. It's more so closest to this section of Fentress Airfield. But if you're close to this area, you will experience jet noise and it does happen regularly enough to where it's, it's noticeable and it can happen at any time. There is an ACUS uh, jet noise zone rating map that I'll put a link in the description so you can see. And you can see the areas that are most influenced by the jet noise and it might help you to decide if it's a place you might want to move to or move away from. Now, number nine. I've mentioned this one in previous videos before, but I gotta say it now. Burrito Perdido, my favorite restaurant in Chesapeake. It's just straight up burritos. It's not nothing fancy, but they're known to not have any uh, can openers because everything's fresh and you can taste it too. And it's inside of a gas station. So you look and drive in, you'll, you'll see the gas station on the right and just to the left of that is a little door and the sign says Burrito Perdido. Totally worth it, change your life good uh, burrito place in Chesapeake. Next, number 10 is a road that I want to tell you about. If you plan on moving to Chesapeake, this is a really helpful road to know if you're going to want to go to Virginia Beach. North Landing Road. It's real sneaky, super helpful. So, um, if you look on the south side of, of Chesapeake and then look at the Virginia Beach, the eastern section there, a lot of the city of Virginia Beach wraps from east to west and goes over towards Norfolk and then hooks around down and kind of goes south from there. And there's a section in Chesapeake there that's a little bit kind of open, doesn't feel like there's a whole lot going on. There's a road called North Landing Road that connects that southern and further western side of Chesapeake to the rest of Virginia Beach, North Landing Road. So if you do plan on moving to South Chesapeake and into the country there, uh, but you also want access to Virginia Beach, especially near the beach, take that road instead of having to go all the way to the interstate up and uh, over east, all the way around, that can take you 35, 40 minutes, Go through North Landing Road, it'll cut your time probably in half. Now number 11, the Chesapeake Square is the Greenbrier of the West. What does that mean? Well, Greenbrier is, I'd say, one of the more popular sections of Chesapeake that people that do move to Chesapeake often talk about. They wanna live in the Greenbrier area. Awesome area, big boom in the 90s, a lot of houses were developed in there and lots of shopping. Well, on the western side of Chesapeake in Western Branch, that school district, there's an equivalent area similar to it called Chesapeake Square, which is, I'd say, a little bit of a smaller version of Greenbrier, but it's the same equivalent in terms of you can live close to uh, Chesapeake Square and have access to the similar kinds of shopping that you would in Greenbrier, so instead of having to drive 25, 30 minutes to get there. So it's a smaller version of the same thing, but a, a totally separate side of the city. Then number 12, I don't know if many people know this. If I say the name Joinville, Joinville, Brazil, that's the sister city of Chesapeake. Yes, Chesapeake, Virginia has a sister city. I've never been, I don't know if I'll ever go there, but what I will say about it is it has lots of German elements in it, so it kind of has that feel to it. So if you're just moving here, that's a question you can ask almost any local, and most of them probably don't know the answer. Now number 13 is one that I talked about briefly when I talked about Lake Drummond. We're at the top of the Atlantic Intercoastal Waterway. It's a waterway that connects from the Norfolk area, starting in this area, going all the way down, all the way down to Key West. And it's basically, it was created in order for boats to be able to transport 
away from the open sea inland so you're not susceptible to all the elements of the open seas. It's maintained by the US Army and is 1100 miles from Norfolk where we are all the way down to Key West. And so in the Chesapeake area, you cross over the intercoastal waterway four times. And three of those are by drawbridge. Uh, the Great Bridge, uh, remember where the, Great, the Battle of Great Bridge is? Right next to that is a drawbridge that, that goes over the intercoastal waterway. And there's another one that's the Centerville Bridge. It's also a drawbridge that goes over that uh, intercoastal waterway as well. This one was closed for a long period of time. Now it's just reopened this past year. So you have multiple ways to get over the, over the intercoastal waterway. So it's not something I would say, don't plan your whole life around this. Just kind of know that it's there. If you have any more questions about moving to this area, please let me know. I'll do whatever I can to help you. My contact information is in the description. Email, call, uh, Facebook message, text, whatever is the best way for you. And I'll do whatever I can to help you. And I will see you on the next video.